none of them will ever know me. And Natalie, just before she went to college, I said, do you remember how I used to take you to the park? She's like, no, Mom. Oh, She's like, but, but don't worry. I love you so much. I'm like, I know, but I just, I wanted you to know me then. Oh. Isn't that silly? No, not, <laughs> I, it's, it's not silly. But they know you, and they know your heart, yes. and you're here, and you're <laughs> their know. lovely, beautiful, warm, generous mother. You're their mother. Yes, and of course. And they have their mother, and that's what's most important, and they yes. have you. And I do we don't, we don't know that. why we're put on these journeys sometimes, and we ask questions, and we talk, you talk a lot about your faith in this book, and I'm sure it must have been challenged at times and still challenged because you – you want to believe there's a reason for everything, but we can't always understand what that reason is. If you just tune in, it, you're listening to What's Up with Wendy on 1490 WGCH, Where Fairy Tales Go, a love story by Annette Ross, my dear friend, former New Canaan resident. <laughs> so let's go back to coming home. Bill, <laughs> taking care of you, bringing home Anna, Natalie being home. What was that like? Well, let me just say that Bill was amazing. And when we were in rehab, we were only there for one week, and I wasn't really in a really good mood to do rehabilitation. So I had started to get a little, you know, upset about what was going on. I wanted to get home to the family, and Bill's like, well, what do we need to do to get her out of here? And I was having a hard time doing some of the things. And Bill's like, you know what? I'll do them. You know, he would cap me. He was like, I, I couldn't do it myself. I was having, I was really stabbing myself, basically. The urethra is a very small <laughs> place in the body. So he's like, I'll do whatever I need to do to help her to get home. To get so home. he did. We got home. He took care of me. And I think a lot of men, first of all, you know, just want to say, we only married five years. <laughs> so I think a lot of men would be like, what is up with that? And is this going to be? And he was already, think, I think, thinking this is going to be a long haul. I think he thought I was going to walk for sure, but it was going to be not like in a couple days. So he was ready to just take that role on and carried me up and down the stairs for a year. For a year because I couldn't get a stair climber because I couldn't bear the thought that this was going to actually go on. And he was right. like, oh, don't worry about this. it. Right. I'll do it. So he took care of me. He cast me. He put up with all of that. I think stuff that, you know, you try to keep private from your husband. You know, right. it's sort of like it was embarrassing to me. And I thought this is going to like kill our intimate life you know it's going to be really awkward and he was like so game to go there so game to just be the way exactly the way we were and so hands-on with the kids and we get, we were able to get help with Anna that was a little hard for me because I wanted to be the one and my milk never came in so that was sort of difficult for me but I wanted to be the one getting up with her but at that point I didn't have the upper body strength to turn myself well in bed Bill was getting up doing that and catching me and I was on these programs and I was doing a lot of physical therapy, so I was there physically in the house. But honestly, Bill was doing pretty much everything and trying to hold down a job while taking care of me and the kids and keeping me sort of emotionally. And it wasn't the kids; together. it was babies. <laughs> it was a it was, old it was baby, babies, yeah. which which a lot of people can't handle anyway, mom or dad, right? It's yeah, not easy. We so had other people helping as well. Combined, you write in the book. And I, I told you, I think I read this a couple times. Bill absorbed the shock and the pain, carried the burden of what I could not yet comprehend. In the hospital, he was my husband, trusted friend, patient advocate. See, I'll start crying because this, like, there's very few people, and that's why your love story is, is what's got you here to this day right now still, right? <laughs> um, during the hours of conversation with the doctors who used terms we'd never heard of, Bill took notes, drew pictures of the horsetail bundle of never called... Uh, you go on. You go. You go on, and you go on to say, um, "While I was held our sweet baby girl, my back against a soft pillow, I reminded myself, I have a place to go after this." And that that was pretty profound. You said that a couple times in the book, and it's like you always had a place to go home. You had people to go home to. That was a big part of this support and the help. I think that keeps guiding you, right? Yeah, I mean that's what got me through. The belief that I was had somewhere else to go and that I had an important role to play with the girls and that I was going to go home. Bill was there and that we, I really believed we could adjust. I mean, I obviously still believe that I would be walking and we put a lot of energy and time into that effort. But yeah, it was, what was pulling me through was I kept on saying to myself in the hospital bed, I have a place to go after this. I'm going to go home. I'm not going to stay here. This doesn't end here for me. You know, in a hospital bed, it's, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to figure this out. 
so I did have that part of me that was still strong. I mean, it was sort of like, I sort of say in the book a lot, I think, that I'm, I had this duality going on. You know, I had a very strong side of me that was really resilient, and then I was struggling with a side of me that was fearful, in shock, and I couldn't believe that my expectations of life had just changed so dramatically. And I think expectations can get you in trouble sometimes. Like when I thought right. my fairy tale was, when I thought life was going to go a certain way, and I dug my heels in, and I dug them in. Like it needs to go this way, you know? So I think that was a part of me that, you know, there's that conflicted part right. of me, and the part of me that's really strong and can go and put one foot in front of the other. So we go home. Yeah, we go home. Sorry. We have, we have two. No, no, no. You're, this is your story. <laughs> This is your story. We we have two babies. Yep. We have a husband who's doing trying it. to hold down a job, doing everything, and <laughs> we have you. Me. And how was that like? You know, we got into a routine. We got into a routine. The doctor said that, you know, I was in menopause, and we got into a routine of life there. And it was coming back a little bit. I mean, I was getting some feeling back. I was getting certain things back. I was really very committed to my therapy. Bill mm-hmm. made all that happen. He was still doing okay with work. He was able to hold all of it down. And we were sort of having an intimate life again. We have sort of figured all that out. And that's really important in a marriage. And I didn't know if he would ever look at me the same. But honestly, Bill, even though he's thrown my wheelchair in the driveway at times, oh, my gosh, he has. He was so angry. He picked it up, hurled it into the driveway. I'm like, oh, I'm going to kill him. He's like, God Damn it in the head! You know, was, he would get so mad sometimes that it was happening. He was just, he was just, they had the rage. In a way, banned. wasn't it healthy though? I think to it get was that really out? good yeah. for him. I was going to say sometimes you need that because if you hold it in, then you're going to explode somewhere else. No, it was really, really good for him. Even so, he just wanted to have a life with me, wanted to be close to me, and always looked at me like that's my bride. I never felt they'll look at me once mm. in another way, and many people did look at me differently. Because you can feel it. I'm sorry. But see, you won't know that because when he, like, but if you were to all of a sudden come as a different person in the way you are right. when you're in a wheelchair, you can feel how people look at you differently. Right. But Bill, nada. Seriously. And I would tell you because I would be totally honest. You know, he's right. not a perfect man. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> he's not. He's human. He's human. He's totally human. Oh, my god. But gosh. with you, you're his, No, you're I'm his, his bride. Right. Done. And that was it. So I was, thought I was thrust into menopause and then... Surprise, I got pregnant. I mean, that was the thing. That and we were both like, and I said to Father Les, he came over to the house when I found out I was pregnant. I said, well, I'm not taking this as God's funny joke to me. I'm they, told like, you, they told you you done. were not. Well, I, wouldn't you, have, I didn't have a cycle. Right. They so said, not just that they, so I wasn't even cycling. So I was like, well, they're right. <laughs> they'd done right. all the workups, the blood workups. And they right. said, listen, you're not, you have no estrogen really. This right. is just, you're, we think you're done. And even though they didn't say, we know for sure, they never really say that about anything, you know. So I just figured, well, I'm not cycling, so I'm going to have to deal with this blow, and I'm thinking I should probably get something to help myself so I can still feel like a woman, whatever. I was really concerned about all of those things, but then I got pregnant. I'm like, oh. Well, did, you, so, so, uh, did, you, did you feel it was different, or did you, like, how did that happen, like, with Ingrid? So you were all of a sudden, uh, you <laughs> I'm pregnant? Yeah, I was all of a sudden, like, Something's There's different. Something's not. Something's going on. Something's going on. And yeah. I got a pregnancy test. And we're like, no, no, no. And then we're like, I said, yeah. It's one of the thousands of pregnancy tests I think I've bought in my life that said, plus sign. Isn't that? <laughs> so here you, here you have Ingrid. And you said her name had significant meaning to you. Hero's daughter. Yes. I love that. It's a Norwegian folktale. I love that. And bringing Ingrid home, you said, gave... You just, it, Ingrid felt like a miracle. Bringing her home was she like, did. there was life again. There was. I mean, it so, was already sort of beginning, but the life that my life inside of me, that I could still bear children, empowered me somehow. I can't tell you what that did for me, because it's sort of like, and I thought that Ingrid was going to be the last, but it sort of put that I was still capable of doing this wonderful thing in life, bringing life forth into the world. That Were was you such scared a, a little bit? Were you scared? I Besides, was. I said to Father Les, I think this is this is really going to be the thing that knocks me down now. You know, right, something three, else three terrible is going to happen. Well, I actually thought I'm giving birth again. And since there was still like a lot of questions as to what actually happened, we knew there was not going to be an epidural involved in my next, you know, birth. But they were still like, what is this going to be like? We found a great, you know, OBGYN who's a specialist. Mm-hmm. 
and handles like all these kinds of special pregnancies. And so I was just, I was afraid physically as well. Just I didn't know what to expect. Of course. You, I was going to say you must have been very scared too. Yeah. Besides like the joy of, wow, and I can do this still. I can do this, and right, and have life. Yes. Yes, I know it was a beautiful feeling, but I was you know, like really petrified too. And the girls, what were the girls like? They were honestly overjoyed. They oh. were. I just think that they, I think that my daughters, as much as they're like, get get tired of each other, and you know they're girls. Well, they're and they, girls, nah, nah, girls, nah, and there's five of them, right? Like mom, mom, mom. You know, one more, please. You know, uh, more clothes, more yeah. shoes, more makeup. Exactly. <laughs> I just think there's something about them that they're like me. Like when they see babies, they're like, oh. It's beautiful. It's life. Right, you know, right, that right, kind of a right. thing. So Ingrid came home. Yep. And it was wonderful. Absolutely a high. Just and, I, and I'm just going to back up a little bit. So Bill, the high school <laughs> football coach, he came and he, we, we was, my son played football, youth football. Yes. And Bill was brought on to coach. And here comes this guy. And I was the team mom at the time. So <laughs> yes. this is how our story comes together. And I remember he would pull up in his Jeep with his crazy fla- plaid shirts. I'm like, he's a football coach and he has plaid shirts on. Okay. And he was like, oh, you know, always like g- ready to go. And I admired that about him. And he'd always have Ingrid in tow with him. Yep. So my daughter was there. So I would have Ingrid and my daughter there. And I was, I, there was always just something special about their bond. Different, different from a father daughter. It just, there was something. And it wasn't until I met you that I go, oh, yeah. there's the whole, there's everything. Yeah. You were you were everything. I could just tell there was something special about this family. And really? then there was you. <laughs> so that's then how we me. that's how we met and um Yeah. And that was a great great couple of years. And then it was the next thing years. I know, more kids. Yes, Mia. More, Mia came. Mia came and then I had that, you know, I had a really we I got pregnant with a baby boy and we lost him. And that was really hard on Bill. I think that was actually the hardest thing he would even say that he's ever been through. Because even though it's not like he ever said to me, like, I need to have a boy, he's not really that way. Right. When he found out at the 15-week ultrasound that we were pregnant with a boy, I just will never forget the look on his face. And he right away lined up the wall to the nursery with his football jerseys. Oh, gosh. Yes. Such a guy. Such a guy (laughs) thing. This pink paper is coming down. (laughs) And the jerseys were already, like, lined up. And he was, I think... Like what you do, you know, envision it. You know, he's going to play catch with his boy the way his dad played catch with him. You know, mm-hmm. I just think he saw that whole thing. And then we, my mom died in 2007, um, and we went to the funeral. We came home. We were just having it was just a sunny day in August, and I just started bleeding, and he had already he had already died, and they never figured out why. His genetics were perfect, actually. They think mm-hmm. that maybe there was a kink in the umbilical cord, but. I'll never forget the look on Bill's face at the hospital. It was just one of them. Um, it wasn't devastation. It was like numb. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get him back. It's just like this face like a net. I'm so done with life giving us any more surprises. Right. I think he was just really um, blank and deeply hurting. But then, as usual, looking after me and making sure I got through all of the, the DNC okay and and I came out of it okay because I was losing a lot of blood. Mm-hmm. They had to rush me to, the, to Yale again. And the guy's like, listen, the baby's gone, but you need to get a hold of yourself. We're going to put you under because you're losing a lot of blood and you're not helping yourself by being, because I wanted, then before they put me under, they asked me if we wanted to see the baby, and we did. And we oh. did get to see him. He was perfect. I mean, he was a little formed, tiny being. Tiny, tiny. <sighs> and uh, that was really... I think a turning point for us in the sense that where life had been good because we had, you know, Ingrid and then Mia, which we sort of didn't mention, the beautiful birth of Mia the year after Ingrid was born. This was like, um, it was like too much. Because even Mia was a surprise. You know, we didn't expect to have another one. I'm like, oh, I guess. The doctors must have been like yeah, Annette. Yeah, they were. I and think you're they like, were. I'm, I, I, I got this. You're like, I got this. Yeah. They were, and they thought, like, don't, you know, put your body through too much. But I'm like, and I was always really trying to, I was never trying to get pregnant. I sort of say that in the book. I don't, people were sort of coming down on me, like, why do you keep on getting pregnant? I wasn't trying to. There's certain things when you have in a wheelchair that you can't, you know, you can't be on the pill or something. I right. couldn't, right. you know, so, yes, I got pregnant, but not, like, through, like, oh, I want to have 20 kids. No, right, right, I didn't right, right, really right, want right. to. Right. I just wanted to accept life as it came. Right. That's how I wanted to be, especially after what happened. 
But I think the boy was a really big turning point for us. Like, there was an emotional feeling in the house that sort of took over, like a looming, like an ominous feeling. It was...